Over time, as they expand, big software companies buy small ones and their software, especially if they are used by many. This is exactly what seems to have happened when Autodesk acquired Softimage from Avid Technology in 2008 for $35 million. It was a 3D software like no other, beloved by many 3D artists and studios, and it was used in some of the most iconic movies such as Titanic, Jurassic Park, and Terminator 2. Also one of the greatest games of all time, which is Resident Evil 4, and I think Softimage played a pivotal role in its success. So how come Softimage doesn't exist anymore? And was it really the case that Softimage was acquired to take it out of the picture, harvest its technology, and make Maya better? But Autodesk said it was just due to unfortunate happenstances. But was it really? The story starts with a man called Daniel Langlois, a filmmaker from the National Film Board of Canada, who founded Saint Image in 1986. You see, Daniel had a deep passion for created animated films, but he hit a wall because, back in the day, the industry was very different. 3D animation was still a fairly new concept, and all the available software were very technical, and mostly targeted for engineers and more technically oriented people. So he had two choices. The first one was to give up and pretend nothing happened, or make his own software, and this is what he did. His idea was to design a 3D software that is made by artists or artists, which marked a fundamental change to the entire industry by being a new software of this kind and leading the path to a new generation of visual effects software such as Maya, Blender, Max, Houdini, and so on. Softimage was arrived in the 90s, and top studios were drooling in excitement to get their hands on it. You may take this for granted today, but one of the great things about this tool was its user interface and workflows that are targeted towards artists as we said, with a complete integration of the entire 3D creation pipeline, such as modeling, animation, and rendering, which were often offered as separate products. This quickly made Softimize rise to stardom and quickly became one of the most used 3D software in the field. Softimage found one of its first uses in major studios in the first Jurassic Park movie in 1993. Just like how Steve Williams, a former ILM artist said, they were so impressed by the software in Verge Kinematic System to the extent that they bought 10 licenses so they can see what they can do with it. But it was later seen and used as a sample in most video games and VFX productions such as Man in Black, Titanic, amongst many more. But where is Maya in all of this? And how does it compete against it? The release of Maya in 1998, after the merging of two companies called Alias and Wavefront, was a major blow to Softimage, and in a sense, the beginning of its end, ironically enough. Let me explain. It's true that Maya was a new generation software that offered a lot of new cool features and capabilities. However, what made Maya really stand out from the crowd and the competition, and one of the main reasons for its success was its mail scripting language, as it was called. And it allows users to create things such as custom tools and expressions with a high level of flexibility. Now, let me take a moment and tell you about Malcolm's mail scripts for Maya. It is basically a set of very useful tools designed to enhance your workflow using Maya. These scripts offer a lot of modeling and productivity tools. For example, the mirror tools allow you to quickly mirror objects and speed symmetrical modeling. And the edge selection enables you to select any edge, vertex, or face with any offset that you want. In addition to access aligned lattice, vert snapping, and tools like deleting empty groups, fast modeling open and close, extra head elements, and much more. Speaking of extra head elements, the scripts offer a visual quick start guide that can be found directly in the Maya shelf by clicking the help shelf button. The developer also offers all these scripts and more for a huge discount if you want to grab the whole mail script mega pack, including every other script in one place, which will be much better than buying them separately. And if you want to keep up to date with all these Maya scripts from this developer, you can check out his LinkedIn page where he posts a lot of new content and posts all about these updates of these tools. So if you are interested, you will find all the necessary links in the description. Softimage, on the other hand, faced many delays in releasing its own next generation software called Sumatra, which would be later named Softimage XSI. By the time it came out, Maya had already gained a considerable advantage in the market 
because it had more time to grow and establish itself as the industry standard software in animation, VFX and game development. Many large studios already built their pipelines around Maya and its scripting language, and they were reluctant to switch to another software that did not offer the same level of customization. What's also important to note is that this acquisition didn't go as planned. In fact, there is a widespread rumor among conspiracy theorists that a hidden agenda drove Autodesk's acquisition of Softimage and it was to transfer its technology to Maya and 3ds Max, then abandon it in other words, just buying it to kill a competitor in the market. To be frank, let's leave that to the side, because it's not what we are here to discuss, for now at least. So after the transfer of some of the core functionalities, such as some graph editor functionalities and even inverse kinematics animation functionalities, but after that, all desk put their hands on two 3D packages that can achieve the same tasks. For example, modeling, animation, rendering, and simulation. Following this, it was pretty much useless for them to have two similar software, especially given the high cost involved in the software development and maintenance. In their statement, announcing the discontinuation of Softimage in 2014, Autodesk explained their reasons behind it as to summarize it, they said, the decision was necessary to keep up with the constantly evolving 3D industry. For example, in 2014 alone, we have seen events such as the release of the Oculus Rift headset and the rise of VR. So it allowed them to focus their efforts on one software to innovate faster and to balance their investment in the development of features and functionalities. Sadly enough, Softimage had to be sacrificed to make their vision a reality, as they claim. Anyways, to get back to our initial question of whether Autodesk buying Softimage was an evil decision to kill it or it was just out of necessity for the sake of their business, but I find it a difficult question to answer because throughout the years we have seen different people having different opinions and perspectives on the matter, which I'm encouraging you to comment on, but there is no clear evidence to prove any of the allegations. To be clear, and I'm leaning in this direction, it is almost possible that Autodesk wanted to eliminate Softimage as a competitor from the market and bought it as part of the monopoly strategy. I mean, after all, Autodesk has a track record of purchasing software products and then either discontinuing them or neglecting their development, such as Mudbox, Bifrost, and Alias. This could indicate that Autodesk did not intend to improve Softimage, but instead, it was only to erase Softimage as a competitor from the market, which is highly probable. But once again, this can be only speculations, as there is no clear proof of this practice. I don't have the power to read minds, as the saying goes, you're innocent until proven guilty. Meaning that another realistic explanation is that Autodesk faces difficulties in maintaining and developing their software due to its outdated architecture and the declining popularity it was facing among users and studios, even though it had a strong base of loyal users. But the sad thing, 2014 was not the 90s anymore, and Maya had taken over Softimage's place in the industry. Naturally, after Autodesk's decision to kill Softimage, they received a lot of backlash from the 3D community, because it was used by many professionals in the industry and many felt betrayed and abandoned by Autodesk who they accused of killing a competitor and forcing them to migrate to other packages such as Maya, which could result in a few problems, like studios and individuals being forced to learn and pay for a new software. Following this series of events, a user named Nick M started a petition on change.org to save Optimage from being retired by Autodesk, and he stated, this petition is intended to show Autodesk and all those interested how many artists, production houses, and lives their decision will affect. We understand that this is a business first, and the odds of Autodesk reversing their decision is slim. But unfortunately, Autodesk never listened, because they already made their minds and they were telling us what the plan is gonna be. Sadly, many people, studios, and industries were affected by this decision, and I don't think in the history of digital art, there was an impactful discontinuation or something that is close to what happened to Softimage. So being angry, frustrated, and feeling betrayed is a natural response to a decision that changed a lot of people's lives. 
So, I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.